Intarsia Museum and we're going to start with a masterpiece of the Lord's Supper. George how many of these things have you produced? I produced uh, three. These are some rather large pieces the entire piece is intarsia, which is three-dimensional pictures made out of natural colors of woods. The first one was small. This one is 50% larger than the first one I made. It took 155 hours to make the first one. Okay, scattered throughout this video is going to be combinations of uh, intarsia and scrolling. I will uh, note when we make that transition. This is another piece of intarsia called a koi. It's made in two halves. But each, each one of those little scales was put on with a, with a burning tube. What are the uh, reeds made out of? I think that's cedar. Okay. The base is red cedar. Okay, now let's uh, move on to the next one here. Okay, this is uh, scrolling to show you that you can do uh, scrolling on most any kind of wood, including logs. This is the three crosses on the mount. Now, how do you go about making that? You split the log and, and then what? You, you, you cut the face part out and then, and then split the log and you end up with three, three parts. The center part you cut the uh, crosses out and then you paint the background black and paint the crosses white and then glue them back together. They're real simple to make. That looks like about a three-week project for me. <laughs> you probably did it in a lot less, right? Well, other than waiting for the glue to dry or the paint to dry, it, it, it only takes a couple hours. Okay, and this is another piece with the, the Magi at the birth of Jesus. Again, using the same technique where you, you want to describe that, George? You just find find a find a limb somewhere and cut cut you a piece and cut the center the front front part off, throw it away, and then cut cut your hole in that one and slice the log in th three parts and cut the uh, scrolling out of the center part and paint them and put them back together, glue them back together. Here's another intarsia example of two doves over a statement there about peace on earth. Is that ribbon? Uh, is that cedar? Cedar, yeah. yeah. And then the globe is cedar and something else, something dark. Probably wall. Okay. My my wife Dot found that pattern and asked me to make it, and I ordered the pattern. And I started making it without telling her. So when I was about half through with it, 
I came in one day at lunchtime and I told her, by the way, I'm making Jesus knocking on the door. She said, well, what would have been nice would have been if you'd have taken a picture of our front door and had him knocking on it. I said, well, it's too late now because I'm half through with it. But so when I finished it, I decided to put my numbers over the door. I put 3206 up over the door just temporarily because I was going to take it off once I showed it to her. It was just sort of a joke. But she liked it so well, I left it on there. And of course, it'll never come off now. This is another intarsia piece of Jesus on the cross. Here's a intarsia owl that George made how long ago? Uh, probably about eight years ago. It sure looks like he's got a serious looking face. <laughs> for the feet or is it some other material? I think that's basswood. I use, I use a lot of uh, uh, cedar. The cedar you can get in a, a medium light, medium and a medium dark. So it, it fills a lot of voids. Dinosaur family, and uh, he made this for a grandson. Grandson put names on all of them. He could just by by sight rattle off what uh, each one of these dinosaurs were. I think I could. Maybe recognize one of them, like that T-Rex there. And then we work our way back over to Intarsia again. Where we've got the, the infamous raccoon pattern that's been... Many, many copies of that pattern have been made. We've got a couple of them in the GWA classroom. Here we have the family captured in fretwork. <coughs> okay, whenever you're ready. This friend of mine that, that makes ornaments, Christmas ornaments, uh, had a friend that had a, had a baby born that was deaf. And of course it's, it's several years old now. And they wanted a, an ornament made using the uh, sign language for I love you. And so I made, I made these for him to use to make, make the ornament. You take that and put that on the side of a Christmas ornament, right? Mm -hmm. and, and turn it. it and turn it. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is the second set I made because somebody saw the set, he, the one he made, and wanted one for somebody, a friend of theirs. Yeah. Okay, here we have the intarsia wall on George's back porch, and uh, rumor has it that. Uh, George has more intarsia back here than at Judy Gale Roberts Museum. A few examples of what George can 
knock out in a couple hours. <laughs> favorites, Yosemite Sam, done in Intarsia, Elmer over here in the background, Here's the continuation of the Back Porch Museum at George North. The painted items would be uh, segmentation instead of intarsia. Okay. <clears throat> Even though these pieces look like they're made in an intarsia style, this is painted wood as opposed to natural wood. So, therefore, they get called segmentation. And there's just a little bit of it on display here. some pretty large pieces. Here is more examples of George's skill with segmentation and intarsia. This piece had adorned his son's dental office when he was still practicing. a panther that has been duplicated numerous times. That tag on this is one of my granddaughters. She made that? No, she oh. put the tag on this so she did it. Oh, her. okay. Yeah, George is doing a smart thing. He's starting to put names on the back of these things as to which relative inherits them after he passes. has just a few objects here that he's making for the church. This is just a small sampling of uh, what he makes for their craft sales. Here's a few more examples of the manger scene in a log. George discovered he's got to make these things in mass because uh, as soon as he shows up at the craft sale, the people sitting at the craft sale wind up buying up all his inventory before the sale goes on. That's probably what's going to happen to those bears over there. George recently discovered a, a new passion. He got a uh, got himself a Pegasus bandsaw 
and he is taking up making bandsaw boxes. So he's uh, he's decided that uh, he's going to start off with five of them at the craft show and see if any of them make it to the actual sale before the people setting up stamp them up. A uh, scroll slide them here. I have a few light switch covers. Looks like these are destined for the crash show at the church. Here's another crash show favorite making uh, earrings from coins. scene on a log, taking a cross section of a log and cutting a major scene in it. And just a couple more pieces of segmentation and intarsia. The, the series on the museum. Okay, here's where all of that intarsia and segmentation and all that other work that we saw in there was made. I do believe George is trying to compete with Jim Gunsweiler <laughs> on the number of bandsaws that he can have in his shop. During the shelter in place, we're looking at where George's place was. He's been camped out in here for about four months. <laughs> 